Alright guys, welcome back. Another day. <clears throat> I got the uh, linkage adjust on that. Moved it forward and reverse on its own recognizance. <clears throat> so now I'm just going in and uh, going to reset the adaptations. And we'll go for a test drive. So, yeah, one of the things, if you're one of my loyal viewers, you may have noticed I was thinking about setting up a Patreon and getting a little more in-depth answering questions, maybe one-on-one -on -one or a group setting, um, or even just <clears throat> telling stories that I've experienced in the last month. Because a lot of times, uh, there's always something interesting happening in an automotive shop, that's for sure. So, one of the stories I could tell you about how I learned transmissions is when I first opened my business, I wanted to give uh, my customers a better, better deal. Imagine that, because I knew at the, at the dealership they were charging eight to $10,000 to do a transmission. And at the time, I did not know how to do transmissions. I mean, I worked at the dealership, so you just swapped it out. You didn't take it apart or anything. And so through uh, references of another, of another, oh man, I've got to plug something in. Hold on one second. I don't know if you can see it on the screen with that air mass sensor. Yeah, it wasn't plugged in. And then the gear ratio monitoring, that should be all taken care of now. So it says currently present, but it's not. So let me do this. Anyway, so somebody said, oh, I know a guy that can rebuild BMW transmissions. I was like, cool. So I called him up and he says, oh yeah, I can do, I can do minis, no problem. I was like, okay. And so I gave him, at that time we had the CVT transmission, which was notoriously bad. And then the Ace and Warner that I'm doing now that they still, they still make. Uh, so what happened was he started rebuilding them bad. The, the kit that he was using on the K1 clutch pack, it, uh, it was too thick. And how the system works is it'll put six pounds of pressure into that K1 clutch pack just to engage it and then ramp up the pressure to about 60 PSI. Well, he was putting thicker friction discs in it and it was taking up that little bit of slack, 50 thousandths of slack, or about a half a millimeter, I think. And as soon as you'd put it into drive, bang, it would, it would bang right into gear. So, you know, I took it back to him like three or four times. By this time, I probably had four transmissions out there that were all doing the same thing. And then he basically said, forget you, go pound sand. Um, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fix it, you're on your own. So I was like, okay, well, I kind of have a conscience and I wanted a better service. I wasn't gonna leave my customers hanging. So with a video camera over my shoulder, I started taking it apart. I bought a book. I actually figured out what was happening. And once I fixed it, man, I was overjoyed. And that's basically how I came into doing transmissions. It was by force, not by choice. But now that I've done it, um, I, back in the day, 2012, 2013, 2014, we are doing maybe three to five of these a month. So I got really good at it and different things happen and fail at different times. So, you know, that, that's how I got into rebuilding transmissions. And the same thing, he, he left a bearing literally the size of the palm of your hand. I don't know if you can see this, but about this big out of the transmission and it was just one of those things, you know, at the time I was really upset and just angry. Um, but now at this point, I can't thank that man enough because over the top, over the years, I've probably made hundreds of thousands of dollars because he said, screw you, go pound sand. So, 
super happy about it. Even though at the time, literally blood, sweat, and tears you're going through. But um, all in all, it worked out. So I just reset the adaptation values of the transmission. It says they were reset. I screenshotted it, boom. So now what I'm gonna do, all the codes are clear. I'm gonna back out of it and we'll go for a little drive and see if we got third gear. I'm pretty sure we do. I mean, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Sorry, my uh, terminology. And if you do, I'm gonna come back around and spray down the the engine. Haven't done that yet. And then we'll go for the two mile. So right now I'm just gonna run it up the road. Let's see what happens. Ugh. 136,000 on these. I think yesterday I said 138. Safety first, put your seatbelt on. traffic coming you are with me on the initial drive right now we're in first first second third here's the test fourth look at that Look at that. I was gonna hit fifth, but I wanna go back to the shop. Post down. But remember when it hit fourth before, it would flare up. Wee, wee, it was almost going to neutral. <laughs> Got her fixed. As Hannibal used to say in the A-Team, I love it when the plan comes together. Ready, one, or first. Second, third, fourth, fifth. Yeah, I overshot the shot, but I wanted to see if it'd go in fifth. So, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure we got it. So, I don't have much on the, on the roster today. Maybe that blue car, we'll see if it's the JVE or if it's the fuel pump going out. Um, and go from there. So that's probably gonna be it for today. Like I said, I do have a lot of cleaning I can do. I don't know if you looked around my shop, but there's always cleaning to be done. Sometimes you just don't wanna do it, you know? Anyway, all right guys, thanks so much. Heading back to the shop now, and I'm gonna go on my test drives, do that two miles, turn around, come back, make sure we got no fluid leaks, and then go on like a 25 miler. So, pull up to the hose here. Spray this thing down from the coolant leak from yesterday. And that's it. All right guys, thanks so much. All right everybody, we're looking into this one now. When I scanned it, had misfire faults, but let me turn this thing off here. Um, if you run it for about three minutes, it dies. So what I'm gonna do here, hopefully just put you new meaning to the word dash cam. Put you right there. I'm gonna pull the back seat out. And then I made a little tool for checking the checking the power to the fuel pump.
So basically to get to the fuel pump, you got to remove the back seat. These little clips that hold it in the back for child seats. I'm in a lift, so I don't want to open up the back door too much. The passenger door doesn't open. I just realized I created a leak. Transmission fluid because I flipped the transmission over. Yay, more cleaning. Skinniest guy to be crawling all over here, I'll tell you. Let's move this out. Ooh, money. Would you like a quarter? So now I'm going to take the cover off. Here, the, the gun didn't have to do any rat a tat tats, so they weren't even tight. So, somebody's probably been in here already. And this is one thing that I love you put a, your expert on the sign out front guess what people don't bring you the easy stuff the brakes some people do but for the most part you get all the stuff that people can't fix which is cool you know I don't mind that show you how dusty and dirty this thing is that is some nasty nasty stuff so this is the plug for this test I'm just trying to see if the module set continuously sending the power because sometimes the module goes bad so like I said I made this tool it's not pretty I took a cap off of the one that had busted so what I'm gonna do is install this and basically all this is is a bypass but I can hook it up. I can hook up my meter to the bypass to see if I'm getting voltage where I need to get to get it. And I'm holding the camera as I'm trying to do this, so please forgive me. Okay. So that's there. Put you back on the dash. In. All right, the ground side I'm not worried about. It's going to ground internally. I'm going to pull out my trusty fluke 88 automotive meter okay. 
Okay, so right now we have zero volts. And that's right where we should have zero volts. Okay, the car's not on, the key's not on. As soon as I crank it, turn the key on, we should have voltage. All right, I don't know if you can see right now, we're getting 11 volts. 11.4, 12, 13. Okay, now we got battery voltage, good. So, what happens is, it's either the fuel pump's heating up because it only takes about three minutes for it to die. It's either the fuel pump's heating up, the cut now, or, the relay that's integrated into the junction box electronics is dying out, crapping out. So, I feel like being to see this, I'm trying to make this, you know, immersive and interactive, of course. Oh, well, here we go, here we go. Here, do you hear it dying? So I think the relay is good. I mean, technically I think it should still be on, but since the engine's off, because it had battery voltage until it, until the car actually died. All right, so we're 11, two, 13, six, 13, four, Seven. It's something that's heating up and expanding, like the fuel pump internally. It's got a short or something. Should get quicker and quicker. Here we go. Slowly going down. I don't know if you can hear it kind of. There it goes. Rock, rock. So you see, it'll drop like 13.2. When it shot before, it dropped to 12 something and then 12 went to 12.7. Out of curiosity, I'm going to try to keep the battery voltage up by accelerating. So it is a fuel pump. I think it's a fuel pump, guys. So, I got a spare, I could test it. I also got a new one I could just throw in. So we'll see how that goes. I didn't have a fault code or anything for that low pressure side or anything. So I'm at zero right now. Anyway, it's uh it's getting late. I'll probably just do this tomorrow, but just so you guys kind of know the diagnostic procedure on this one, all right? Thanks for stopping by. Thanks. Bye.